Hey yo, it's me, Factor and Frank, showing you how to graph basic quadratic functions in standard form. Now here's a question. You wanna hear a joke about construction? You gotta wait, I'm still working on it, ayo! First vocabulary term is a quadratic function. That's an equation of degree two written in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Down here are some examples of quadratic functions. Note that they don't all necessarily have to have three terms. Like here we have y equals x squared. That's a quadratic function. It just means your a value is one, your b value is zero, and your c value is zero. Here, again, this is also a quadratic function where your a value is one, your b value is zero, and your c value is negative nine. Quadratic functions just need to be degree two. The second vocabulary term is a parabola. That is the graph of a quadratic function written in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So here we have the graph of y equals x squared. You can see that it creates this u-shaped graph we call a parabola. You'll get this anytime you graph a quadratic function. Now a vertex is the highest or lowest point on a parabola. So here, if we are graphing our parabola and it ends up opening upward, our vertex is gonna be the lowest point on the parabola. Here, if we graph our parabola and it opens downward, the vertex is gonna be the highest point on this parabola. Now, the minimum value of a function is the least possible y value for that function. So here you can see we have a parabola opening upward. Anytime you have a parabola opening upward, you're gonna have a minimum. You're not gonna have a maximum because you can see it goes up forever, okay? So your minimum value is the least possible y value, which is the y value of your vertex. So what's the vertex? Well, the vertex is at negative two comma negative four. Since the y value is negative four, that is the minimum value of your function. The maximum value of your function is the greatest possible y value for that function. So in this case, we have a parabola opening downward. So it's not going to have a minimum because it keeps going down forever, but it will have a maximum. And that is, again, the y value of your vertex. So here your vertex is at 4, 3, meaning that 3 is the maximum value of your function. Next vocabulary term is the axis of symmetry. That's a line through a shape so that each side is a mirror image. So you can see down here, the green line cuts the parabolas in half so that each side is the exact same. In quadratic functions of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the axis of symmetry is found using the formula x equals negative b over 2a. Notice that it's x equals negative b over 2a. x equals a number means that it's going to be a vertical line. So when we have quadratic functions of this form, your axis of symmetry is going to be a vertical line. And you find that by using this formula. Also notice that our vertex here is at negative five comma six. Our axis of symmetry is at x equals negative five. Here, our vertex is at three comma zero. Our axis of symmetry is at x equals three. It looks like the axis of symmetry is located at x equals and then whatever the x value of your vertex is. So that might be a little help later on. Now, standard form of a quadratic function. So here we have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Our a, if it's positive, will be a parabola opening upward. If our a is negative, our parabola will open downward. Okay, that causes a reflection over the x-axis. If a is a really big number, like 100 or negative 100, you'll have a really skinny parabola. If a is a fraction between negative one and one, like negative a half or positive a half, your parabola will be a lot fatter. It'll be wider. Your b value, we just said, is used in the formula, negative b over 2a. That determines the x value of your vertex. We talked about that. And it also determines the axis of symmetry. X equals negative b over 2a is your axis of symmetry. If you want to figure out the y value of your vertex, all you have to do is take the x value that you get, negative b over 2a, and plug it back in for x in this function. When you simplify, you'll get the y value. Your c value just determines the y-intercept of the function. So wherever your parabola goes through the y-axis. Now let's talk about graphing a quadratic function. So to graph a function in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the first thing we're gonna do is find the x value of your vertex or the axis of symmetry using x equals negative b over 2a. So we said this formula gives you the x value of your vertex. It also gives you your axis of symmetry. So with this, we are gonna create a t-table and use the x value in the middle. So we take this x value that we find, we plug it in the middle of your t-table. Then we're gonna choose two x values above and below the x value of your vertex. So whatever we found, we're gonna pick two x values above and two below. 
Then we're going to plug all those x values into the original function for x to get the y values that go with them. Then we just plot the five points. Cool. What do carpenters have in common with volleyball players? They both like to hammer spikes. Boom! Example time. Now example one says graph the function y equals x squared. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to find the x value of your vertex or the axis of symmetry using x equals negative b over 2a. So we look up here. I don't see anything after x squared. Well, this is technically in the form y equals x squared plus 0x plus 0, where our a value is the number in front of x squared. That's 1. Your b value then is 0. Your c value is also 0. So we take our 0 for b, plug it in. Take our 1 for a, plug it in simplify and we end up getting zero now x equals zero is the x value of your vertex it's also your axis of symmetry so we're going to draw a vertical line at x equals zero now we know that our parabola should be the same on both sides of this line that's a way to check your work now in step two we're going to make a t table with the x value in the middle so we make a t table x and y and in the middle of your t table right here our x value in the middle is going to be zero we're then going to pick two x values above and below that x value. So two values above that would be one and two. Two values below zero would be negative one and negative two. Now all we have to do is plug in those values. So let's plug in two. If I were to plug in two to this function up here for x, it's just y equals two squared plus zero times two plus zero. So it's just doing the x squared. So y equals two squared, that's four. So y is equal to four. Let's plug in one for x. So y equals one squared, that's one. Plug in zero, y equals zero squared, that's zero. Here, we plug in negative one for x. What's y equals negative one squared? Well, it's negative one times negative one, that's positive one. So, positive one is your y value. And then you plug in negative two for x. Y equals negative two squared. What's negative two squared? That's four. So, we now have our x and y values that correspond. We can then graph those points. So, over here, two comma four, we go over two, up four, we put a point. 1 comma 1, we go over to 1 comma 1, we put a point. 0 comma 0, right here, our origin. Negative 1 comma 1, we go over to negative 1 on our x-axis, up 1 on our y-axis, put a point. And then negative 2 comma 4, we go over to negative 2, up 4, put a point. Draw a parabola going through those, and you have successfully graphed your function, y equals x squared. What's the best way to cut a pie? A circular saw! hey -ho, you try! Okay, doing the same thing. So step one, find the x value of your vertex or axis of symmetry. We're using x equals negative b over 2a. So look up here. Again, there is no b or c. So that just means b and c are both zero. So our a is two, our b is zero, our c is zero. So when we use our formula, x equals negative b over 2a, we plug in zero for b and two for a. We then simplify, two times two is four, and then negative zero over four is still zero. So our x value of our vertex is zero. Our axis of symmetry is at x equals zero. So we go over here. At x equals zero, we draw a vertical line. That'll help us check our answer at the end. Next, we create a t-table, plug in our x value in the middle of that t-table, and then we pick two x values above that and below that. We then plug in those x values to the original function and get the y values that go with them. Since this is just y equals two x squared, we take the two, plug it in for x, so what's two squared? We have to do the exponent first, remember. Two squared gives you four, and then four times two gives you eight. So that is going to be the y value that corresponds with our two. Next, we plug in one for x. What's one squared? That's one. One times two is two. Plug in zero for x. Zero squared is zero times two is zero. Plug in negative one for x. What's negative one squared? Well, we said negative one times negative one is positive one, and then times two is two. Then we plug in negative two. What's negative two squared? Negative two times negative two is positive four times two is eight. We then graph these points. So over two on our x-axis, up eight on our y-axis, put a point. Then one comma two, we go over one on our x-axis, up two on our y-axis, put a point. Zero comma zero, that's the origin. Negative one comma two, we go over negative one on the x-axis, up two on the y-axis, put a point. And then negative two comma eight, we go over negative two on the x-axis, up eight on the y-axis, put a point. Draw a parabola going through those, and you're done. Now example two, doing the same thing. Step one, find the x value of vertex or axis of symmetry using x equals negative b over 2a. So we look up here, again, there's no b or c. So that just means they're both zero. So our a value is negative one half, our b value is zero, our c value is zero. We plug those in to our formula here. And when we simplify, two times negative one half, the two and the, this two cancel out, you just get negative one down here. And the negative negative just makes it positive zero over one which simplifies again to zero. 
That means our axis of symmetry is going to be at x equals zero. That's the vertical line right here. And once we have that, we can then create our t table. We're going to put zero in the middle of our t table for the x's. We're going to pick two x values above that and two x values below that. We can then plug those in to the original function to get the y values that go with them. So if I were to plug in two here, two squared gives you four. And then four times negative one half is actually going to be negative two. What if I plug in one? One squared is one times negative one half is just negative one half. Zero squared is zero times negative one half is zero. Negative one. Negative one squared is positive one times negative one half is negative one half. And then negative two squared. Negative two squared is four times negative one half is going to be negative two. Now all that's left is to plot the points. So our first point, two comma negative two, we go over two on the x-axis, down negative two on the y-axis. Our next point, one comma negative one half, we go over one on the x-axis, down negative one half on the y-axis, put a point. Zero comma zero is the origin. Our next point, negative one comma negative one half, we go over negative one on the x-axis, down negative one half on the y-axis, put a point. And then negative two comma negative two, we go over negative two on the x-axis, down negative two on the y-axis, put a point. Draw a parabola going through those, and you're done. Hey, why couldn't the family accept their new kitchen faucet? They wouldn't let it sink in. Hello, you try. Okay, same thing. So step one, we want to find the x value of the vertex or axis of symmetry using x equals negative b over 2a. So up here, we look, and again, there is no b or c value, which just means they're both zero. So our a is two thirds, our b is zero, our c is zero. We plug those into our formula for the axis of symmetry here, and what you end up getting, two times two thirds is four thirds, and then negative zero over four thirds, zero over anything besides zero is gonna be zero, so that's easy. We then know that our axis of symmetry is again at x equals zero, so we can draw that. We know our parabola is gonna be the same on both sides. We also can now plug that in the middle of our t table. So we create a t-table, plug that x value in the middle, pick two x values above and below zero. We then plug those into the original function to get the y values that go with them. So if I plug in two for x squared, two x squared is four, and then four times two thirds, four is the same as four over one. So four times two is eight, and then one times three is three. So you get eight thirds or two and two thirds. You then plug in one. What's one squared? That's one times two thirds is two thirds. Zero. Zero squared is zero times two thirds is zero. Plug in negative one. Negative one squared is positive one times two thirds is two thirds. And then negative two, if I were to plug that in, negative two squared is four times two thirds is again gonna be eight thirds or two and two thirds. Next, you then plot these points. So we have two and two thirds. We go over two on the x-axis, up two and two thirds on the y-axis. So almost to three, we put a point. One and two thirds. We go over one on the x-axis, up two thirds, almost to one on the y-axis, put a point. Zero comma zero, that's the origin. Negative one comma two thirds. We go over negative one on the x-axis, up two thirds on the y-axis. So almost to one, put a point. And then negative two comma two and two thirds. We go over negative two, up two and two thirds. So almost to three, we put a point. We draw a parabola going through those points and you're done. Now example three, doing the same thing. So step one is to find the x value of your vertex or axis of symmetry using x equals negative b over 2a. Here we have y equals x squared minus nine. So we have an a value of one and a c value of negative nine. So because there is no x term, just x, that means that your b value is technically zero. So if we were to figure out what our a, our b, and our c values are, we can then plug those in to this given axis of symmetry formula. And when we do, we simplify it and we end up getting zero again. X equals zero is the axis of symmetry. We draw that vertical line here so that we know where our parabola should be the same on each side of that. We then go ahead and make the t-table. We plug in our x value in the middle of that t-table and pick two x values above that and below that. We then plug those x values in to the original equation. So y equals x squared minus nine. So what we do is we take two, plug it in for x. What's two squared? That's four. And then four minus nine is gonna give you negative five. What about one? We plug in one for x. One squared is gonna be one, minus nine is negative eight. What about zero? Zero squared is zero, minus nine is negative nine. Plug in negative one. Negative one squared is positive one, minus nine is going to be negative eight. And then negative two, plug that in for x. Negative two squared is four, minus nine is negative five. We then plot those points. So two comma negative five, we go over two on the x-axis, down negative five on the y-axis, put a point. 
One comma negative eight. We go over one on the x-axis, down negative eight on the y-axis, put a point. Zero comma negative nine. We go over zero on the x-axis, so zero. And then down negative nine on the y-axis, put a point. And then negative one comma negative eight over negative one on the x-axis, down negative eight on the y-axis, put a point. And then negative two comma negative five over negative two on the x-axis, down negative five on the y-axis, put a point. Draw a parabola going through that. And this time your vertex is at zero comma negative nine instead of being at zero zero. Why didn't people like the overconfident bathroom remodeler? He was too cocky, ayo, you try. Okay, doing the same thing here. So first we need to figure out what is the X value of your vertex or axis of symmetry. In order to do that, we need to figure out what's our A, B, and C values. So up here, we look, we have negative two X squared plus four. That means there is no just X term. That means your B value is again going to be zero. So our A is negative two, our B is zero, our C is positive four. We plug in those to our axis of symmetry formula. We simplify and we end up getting zero. Now we have our x value of our vertex and our axis of symmetry. So we can create our axis of symmetry at x is equal to zero. We then plug that x value in the middle of your t table, pick two x values above that and below that, and then plug those into the original function to get the y values that go with them. So two, if I plug that in for x, two squared is four times negative two is negative eight plus four is gonna be negative four. What if I plug in one for X? One squared is one times negative two is negative two plus four is positive two. If I plug in zero, zero squared is zero times negative two is zero plus four is positive four. And then negative one, if I plug that in for X, negative one squared is positive one times negative two is negative two plus four is positive two. And if I plug in negative two, negative two squared is four times negative two is negative eight plus four is negative four. We then plot those points. So two comma negative four, we go over two on the x-axis, down negative four on the y-axis, put a point. One comma two, we go over one on the x-axis, up two on the y-axis, put a point. Zero comma four, we go over zero on the x-axis, up four on the y-axis, put a point. Negative one comma two, we go over negative one on the x-axis, up two on the y-axis, put a point. And then negative two comma negative four, over negative two on the x-axis, down negative four on the y-axis, put a point. Draw a parabola going through those, and you're done. Now, a word problem says a kid drops a baseball from the top of an 80 foot tall building. The function h equals negative 16 t squared plus 80 gives the baseball's approximate height h above the ground in feet after t seconds. Graph the function and determine about what time the baseball hits the ground. So this question is basically just asking you to graph the function h equals negative 16 t squared plus 80. So we're going to do that. Now, remember when we're graphing quadratic functions, the first thing is to find the x value, or in this case, t, because t is x and h is y. So find the t value of your vertex or axis of symmetry using t equals negative b over 2a. We look up here, we have an a value and we have a c value. We don't have a b value, meaning that your b value is technically zero. So our a is negative 16, our b is zero, our c is 80. We plug those in to our axis of symmetry formula, we simplify and we end up getting again, zero. So what that means is that our axis of symmetry is gonna be at t equals zero, that's your y axis. Or in this case, that would be the h axis. Now what we would normally do is create a t table and plug in your t equals zero in the middle. But in this case, we're gonna plug it in the top. Here's why. Look where our axis of symmetry is. That means that our parabola is gonna be something like this, okay? Where it's gonna be even on both sides of this. But we don't care about the negative time. We only care about the time after time t equals zero. So we want more points to the right of t equals zero than we want to the left. So we're gonna have t equals zero at the top and we're gonna choose four t values that are above t equals zero. So like, maybe one, two, three, and four. Now all I have to do is plug in these given t values for the time in the original function and get the height at those given times. So let's plug in zero. If I plug in zero for t, zero squared is zero times negative 16 is zero plus 80 is 80. If I plug in one for t, one squared is one times negative 16 is negative 16 plus 80 is going to be 64. If I plug in two for t, two squared is gonna be four times negative 16 is negative 64 plus 80 is going to be 16. If I plug in three for t, three squared is going to be nine times negative 16 is negative 144 plus 80 is gonna be negative 64. If I plug in four for t, four squared is gonna be 16 and then 16 times 16, I think is negative 256 plus 80 is gonna be negative 176. 
Now all that's left is to plot these points. So 0, 80, we go over 0 on the x-axis, up 80 on the y-axis, put a point. Then 1, 64, we go over 1 on the x-axis, or t-axis in this case, and up 64 on the h-axis, so almost to 65, put a point. 2, 16, we go over 2 on the t-axis, up a little bit above 15 on the h-axis, put a point. And then the next point is 3, negative 64, so over 3 and then down. Oh, that's way off the graph. So the next two points are way off the graph. So from here, we can graph our parabola. Now again, remember the axis symmetry cuts it in half, meaning that half of it's going to be on this side and half of it's going to be on this side. So our parabola is going to look something like this. Now, how does this help us? Well, we're trying to figure out what time the baseball hits the ground. Since h is feet, that means that at h is equal to zero, that would be the ground. Then it looks like our graph crosses the t-axis at about 2.2, 2.3, something like that. So we could say that after 2.2 or 2.3 seconds, the ball will hit the ground. That's how you know. 